let's take a look at this diagram. This is what we use to do a drawdown. In the past, we used to color in all the blocks with graph paper, and now we have the advantage of computers. What I'd like you to take a look at are these lines here. I hope you can see these three and these three here. See them there? Those are the same lines. They're right in the middle. And if you start to look at it as a picture, you can actually see the pattern as it evolves. Here's this, and you look out, and you can see that it repeats. And here's the section in the middle here in between. These two lines here, and there are there. So that is a repeating pattern over and over again. And the way it happens is depending on how you thread it. This is one way I have it thread. So right now, this is obviously magnified to show you the tabby in between all of those, which is kind of hard to see here. Let's take a look at another piece of paper. This is the same thing, but if we take the tabby out, and basically what's gonna happen is once this gets washed, it's gonna shrink. It will look more like this, but there'll still be some spaces in between. But we can see here, here are the, uh, three together. Might look a little different because it's kind of all smushed together. Here it's stretched out. So this is the same pattern, but without the tabby in the uh, printout for you. I just want you to see how that looks on, on paper and then when you actually weave the overshot. And I think I said before, or I might have repeat myself again, if I would cut all the black out, you would basically have fabric. You just wouldn't have the black there because in between every single shot of the pattern, we have a tabby. So we have basically a stable fabric underneath all of the pattern yarns. Well, we have our pattern yarn. This is 3-2. And then I have the tabby. Now this tabby happens to be 20s too. So it's really a lot thinner. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start showing you how I do overshot. It might help you if you're gonna try it. And this is just a very short section that we're going to do right now. So I'm gonna put that shuttle up there out of the way just for a moment. I have my pattern in front of me and it's telling me which um, treadle to press. And it's, of course, the loom's already threaded. So what I do is I press the first treadle and I'm going to take this across and I tuck it in the end. And if you want to put the tail, put it down um, on the back side and then it won't show on the top. Now I haven't uh, done anything with this yet. I'll show you what I do. So that's the first pattern. Now it's time to start the tabby with a thinner one. This is all tabby here or plain weave. I'm going to press this treadle. And what I normally do is I just tuck that in and then uh, it'll just kind of hide itself later on. That's just the way I do it. And I'm gonna take this across and I overlap it. This is gonna be kind of hard to see because this thread is very thin. Some people actually use uh, sewing thread when they're doing overshot. All right, so I did the first one. Now I'm going to go the other way. And if you notice, I'm going, right now I'm going this direction, right to left. And what I like to do is I like to chase my pattern with the other shuttle or the tabby. So they follow. That kind of helps me keep everything in order. Sometimes it still happens that you get things out of order. So I'm gonna keep on going. The other thing that you might notice that I don't have are floating salvages. I highly recommend using a floating salvage if this is new for you. What I tend to do is if I notice that it's not catching on the end, I kind of tuck it in. I kind of cheat a little bit. But the reason I don't like floating selvages is because when I'm weaving all this tabby, you don't really need it. And for me, they just happen to get in the way. So now I'm going right to left, and again, I'm chasing it. And I'm gonna go back up to this other treadling. I gotta watch where I'm at here on my pattern while I'm talking. Very easy to, to make a mistake. Now right now, you can really see this uh, tabby in between and there are five of these. But when it's washed, you're not gonna see it as much. Now, if I was doing this, I'm gonna show you in a minute. If I would continue with the five, that one three times, what's gonna happen? It's gonna come out. So the tabby is actually locking that in place. It's really the base of the fabric. 
if we would cut all the black out, we'd still have a stable fabric. So I have one more for the center part. This is like a little medallion. It might be hard to see it right now. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. Typically, I keep my hand in the middle there. So I have those five in the middle. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is repeat everything the other direction. Or those three in the middle, sorry. It's actually my treadle five. That's why I said that. So now I'm going to press the next one. And going back. Chasing it. And this one, now if you look right now, if you can see here, these three here, one, two, three, mirror this one. So I know I have one more to do. So you can always stop and kind of eye it and see if it looks the way you think it should look. So that's the last of the pattern. So what I do when I get to the end of the pattern, then what I do, excuse my hand in the front of the camera here, then I cut that off and we tuck it in. You can either go underneath and tuck it in or over the top. And I like to pull my little tail out the other end. Now I'm also finished with this yarn, so I'm gonna cut that one off because now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to the heavier, the uh, either 6-2 or 8-2, whatever you've chosen to do. And again, this end one, we tuck it in. And now we go back and forth. And we continue with our, the other end, this is the one end of the towel. So I'm almost finished. So what I'll do is I'll weave another about five inches or so, and then I'll finish with that one and I can start the next one. So if you're a little afraid of overshot, this is just a very small medallion. You don't have to use do the whole, um, the whole towel in this. Just add a little extra pattern to the end. Again, once this is washed and dried, it's gonna look a lot different and you'll see pictures of those at the end of this recording.